Welcome to the Kvasser Memorator Professional Guide. This video will cover several basic steps that should be performed when configuring the unit for the initial logging session. By the end of this video you will have a simple configuration that logs all traffic on the attached CAN buses. This configuration can be used to ensure that the harness you create for the Memorator Professional is properly wired, power is provided correctly, and you have selected the correct bus parameters for communicating on the bus before advancing to more complicated or specific data logging setups. Before beginning, please make sure you've installed the latest drivers from our website and that your firmware is up to date. You will also need to download and run the Kvasser Memorator Tools installer from our website since the configuration tool is not part of our standard driver installation. Plug the Memorator Pro into the computer and the power LED should be lit continuously. If the power LED is blinking, the hardware and driver have not connected properly. See the installation help notes on our website or contact our technical support staff to resolve this issue. If the memory card is not inserted in the unit, please insert the card now. The contacts on the card should face up when inserting the card. Do not use excessive force when inserting or removing the card. The card should slide in smoothly and click into place. With all software installed and the unit properly connected to the PC, start the Kvasser Memorator Professional tool. To enable communication between the setup program and the Memorator Professional unit, you must press the connect button. The device dialog will appear allowing you to choose which device to connect. Click on your unit to select it from the list and press the next button. Press the finish button to connect the unit. The LEDs on the Memorator Professional should now be lit in a running light pattern as shown. If you select General Information, Hardware and Software Version information is displayed on the right. Press the Adjust button to set the real-time clock value in the Memorator to your local time or another desired value. You can select the desired value manually or press the Set Current Time button to set the clock value to your PC's current time. The Get Current Time button will update the manual date time values to the PC's current time, but the changes will not be saved unless you press OK. Press OK to save these settings. Since this is your first time using the Memorator Professional, you should select Firmware Upgrade. Compare your current firmware version to the version that ships with the Setup tool to determine if you should run an update. If the Memorator Pro's firmware is older than the version packaged with the Memorator tools, Press the update button and follow the instructions in the dialogs that appear. Press the next button, select your unit and press next. If you'd like to read the release notes, they're available here. Press next to continue, then press the start upgrade button. The text should indicate that the download completed and that the comparison was also made with the status indicating the update was a success. Press the close button and reconnect the unit. The versions should now be the same. Before you can store data on the memory card, the card must be formatted. It is also a good idea to format the card after updating the Memorator's firmware as changes in the firmware may affect the storage structure. However, formatting the memory card will erase any data that is stored on the card. To format the card, press Disk Management under Flash Disk, press the Initialize Disk button. If your memory card is 2GB or smaller, select FAT16 for the disk format. If your memory card is larger than 2GB, select FAT32. Leave the other field set to 0 for now and press the OK button. The final window of the initialization process is a reminder that the initialization will remove any data stored on the card. Press OK. Once the process is complete, text should appear indicating that the initialization was successful. You are now ready to start creating a configuration for the Memorator Professional. The first item to configure is under Bus Configuration. Here we establish the bus parameters used to communicate on the bus. If you select Bus Configuration, you get an overview of how both channels of the Memorator are configured. To configure one of the channels, select the specific channel you want to configure. There are three methods by which you can set the bus parameters for a channel. The easiest way is to select one of the pre-configured bit rates from the drop-down box and a synchronization jump width from the SJW drop-down box. 
The second method is to press the Select Other button, enter your desired bitrate, and then select one of the bitrate sample point combinations from the generated list. You can reduce the number of entries in the list by checking the Show Only Close Matches checkbox. Once you've selected a row, press the OK button. You will still need to use the SJW drop box to select the appropriate synchronization jump width. With both of these methods, you can also choose the number of sample points. However, a single sample point is recommended. The final method you can use to set the bus parameters for the channel is to provide the 82C200 styled chip register values in hexadecimal format. First select the Enter Chip Parameters radio button at the top of the panel, then enter the appropriate hexadecimal values for BTR0 and BTR1. When calculating these values, you must assume a 16MHz CAN clock or your bit timing will not be correct. You can check your values by looking at the values displayed in the bus parameters group box. As you can see, the values update as register values are entered. The last thing we will look at on this page is the silent mode option. Silent mode means the unit does not transmit anything. This does not just refer to messages. This means the unit will not provide a CAN acknowledgement frame or error frame in response to a received message. This mode is provided to allow the logger to be a listener on the bus with minimal impact on the system. However, CAN requires at least two active nodes on the bus, so if the system you are connecting to is a single node on the test bench, you must turn silent mode off. The memorator will then be an active node on the bus participating in standard CAN frame error checking. If you plan on logging data on both channels, be sure to configure the second channel's bus parameters as well. Our next stop is log configuration. This page only contains a couple of configuration items, but they are important. The first one is a comment field. Use this field to remind you what the purpose of this particular configuration is or where the configuration will be used. The log everything checkbox on this page should never be overlooked. This checkbox has the ability to override any triggers you've programmed in the configuration file. So always double check that this field is set correctly. For this particular configuration, we're not creating any triggers, so we want the log everything checkbox checked. The FIFO mode allows you to choose whether the Memorator Pro stops recording once the memory card becomes full or not. If FIFO mode is not checked, the unit will stop recording once the card becomes full. However, if FIFO mode is checked, the card is treated like a circular buffer with the oldest messages being deleted to make room for the most recently recorded, thus the name FIFO mode. First in, first out. Before downloading a configuration to the Memorator Pro, you should be in the habit of running a configuration check. In this configuration, this step is not important, but this step becomes very important when you use triggers. To run a configuration check, select Target from the main menu, then select Check Configuration. The Check Configuration dialog will appear. If we had trigger conditions that were not configured correctly, this dialog would provide error information describing the problem. We also get an overall configuration status. Press the close button to exit the dialog. To use the configuration we just created, you must download the configuration to the Memorator Pro unit. This is done by pressing the download button. A message box will appear warning that you're about to overwrite any existing configuration in the unit. Press the OK button to continue. You will be notified that the download was successful by a temporary message in the status bar. Another good habit is to verify the configuration has correctly downloaded. Select Target and then select Verify. This will check the configuration in the Memorator Pro against the configuration currently loaded in the Setup tool. A message box will appear stating the results of the comparison. At this point, the Memorator Pro is configured for data logging. All that remains is to connect the unit by pressing the Disconnect button. Connection status will change, and you can now exit the setup software and unplug the Memorator Pro from the USB cable. Once the Memorator Pro has collected data, it's time to extract the files. Connect the Memorator via a USB cable, open Memorator Tools, and connect the unit. Under Flash Disk, select Log Files. This page will list the files available for extraction. Press List Files to create the list. Select the log files to be extracted from the list and press Extract Files to open an Extract and Conversion wizard. 
first to enter the directory the extracted file should be saved to. Next, set whether or not the wizard should warn you before overwriting old files. When this checkbox is checked, the application will overwrite any previous file with the same name in the selected directory. Once that option has been set, assign the base name of the files being extracted. The final three checkboxes are three different ways the wizard can break down the log file into more digestible parts. The first option will add the log file number to the extracted file base name. The second option will add the current date and time to the extracted file base name. And the third function will merge all selected input files into one output file. The final box displays an example of what these formats will look like. Once you've selected your preference, press next. Now we need to select file type. Depending on which file type is chosen, certain formatting options on the following page may be grayed out. The following page also has the option of starting the log file from the beginning of measurement or the first trigger, as well as the ability to toggle whether or not to extract the logged measurements from specific channels. Once all of your preferences have been set, press next and the extraction will begin. Once the extraction is complete, a message will appear in the status box on the bottom of the log files page in Memorator Tools.